Howdy folks. Welcome. We're here at the service desk at FRV. I don't think I've done a uh, video since uh, I got this toolbox and some parts, this parts dish here. Came with its own parts tray. Uh, I want to cheers y'all with this ice cold Lone Star here. And, uh, Cause we're all we're in for a treat. Look at that, nice. Mm, this is a cold one. Cheers, y'all. <sighs> well, we have this beauty to work on today. We will go through the steps to strip this down and put it back together, and make it every bit as beautiful inside as it already is outside. My goodness. Um, I have the tender, the 2426W, and the freight set, the 2169WS, missing the uh, cattle car. We'll be going through the whole entire set. We'll be back. What's that, folks? I'm back. To save us both time, I'm gonna do a time-lapse clip on the breakdown of this thing. And if I find uh, something that's uh, of interest, I will stop the camera and record it specifically in uh, regular time. So let's get to breaking this thing apart. Okay, we have the wheel assembly dismantled from the cab. And all the underside parts here. break this down now. Okay. First we're going to take apart the uh, smoke unit. Then we'll remove the E unit. Then we'll disconnect the, uh, the drive wheel, and then we'll take the motor apart. Oh, and uh, in the uh, time lapse, this little tack was uh, stuck to the magnet traction wheels here. I tried to show it in there, but it's pretty, pretty quick anyway. The uh, field wire is too tight because it was uh, put together first. So, uh, there's one. And 
there's two. And then, <clears throat> there's three. It's free now. The brush plate should pop right off now. There it goes. Oh, yeah. Awesome. We can uh, slip these brushes out of here. There's one. And there's two. Little crusty boogers. Now let's see uh, what the commutator face looks like. Pretty dirty, but not too bad. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this other uh, field wire from the brush plate so it will be completely free. Almost. There he goes. All right. Awesome. Okay. All right. We got a fresh pan of liquid. It's probably about a half inch tall or so in there. Maybe. Yeah, they brought about a half inch. Got my uh, standard cleaning kit here. Chip brush, toothbrush, brass brush, stainless brush. This brush has been pretty well used and beat up. So for this round, I got out a brand new one. And it has a double extra sided one. We got a... New, this is what these looked like prior. Heavy duty Scotch Bright, cut into a little tiny piece if we need it. 800 grit sandpaper to clean the faces of the brushes up. Um, the one thing I did not video was uh, remove the uh, flag pole, the flag holders. <clears throat> and they also took uh, the handrails and stanchions off but that's pretty self-explanatory and there's the handrails and what's left of the shell <clears throat> all right time to start cleaning some parts here we'll be back okay we have got everything but the brush plate a unit, smoke unit, shell, handrails, cotter pins, smoke stack, and the boiler plate and its mounting screw cleaned. And oh, and the uh, brushes. <clears throat> They've been sitting in here for a little bit uh, from the last little round of cleaning. And I know I've showed this in some of the other clips of done but uh share this with y'all again here i've got a about a inch and a half square of 800 grit sandpaper just dunk that in there and then uh this is kind of hard to see it's still black it's carbon on there i take the uh beat up Scotch Bright, roll it around,
Okay, here's the uh, commutator face end to the brush. You can knock it off a little bit with the Scotch Brite, but just hold this uh, square of sandpaper down in the pan, and then um, steadily stand it up on end, and then just roll it around a little bit in a circular motion while applying downward pressure and holding it flat and then spin it around and then swirl it around just a couple times is all it needs a little rinsing and we'll dry that off for y'all so you can see the end result a little bit better here Nice and clean. Ready for some more action. Bring some life back to this loco here. Okay, that's all I got for now. We'll be back in a bit. When uh, cleaning the brush plate, I take a Q-tip and then dip it in the liquid and then insert it on from the underside on the back side of the spring. And um, the spring's gonna catch the cotton swab a little bit, but uh, you can peel that off with some tweezers, no big deal. And then just keep reapplying it and it's, uh, swirling it around uh, until it comes out clean. I'm not gonna attempt to do this with one hand, but uh, anyway, you get the idea. And then I take a cut end of a Q-tip cotton rod or cardboard rod and then stick it in the center of the armature and clean it out swabbing it back and forth get that all clean and uh, sure helps all right we'll be back before we uh, continue with the next part I wanted to share with y'all, I was too lazy to find and dig out a long and skinny container to put the engine frame in. So, we just use a Ziploc bag. Uh, I used the uh, old liquid from my tub and dumped in here. And it, uh, <clears throat> with that, when I squeeze the sides together with the, another uh, metal tin, it, uh, covers the motor up all the way it's been fully submerged um we'll take it out in just a minute and uh start cleaning on it but uh i got an e-unit to show y'all here and we'll get on that next okay i've already got the uh brush plate cleaned up the smoke unit cleaned up and uh while the E-unit was uh, soaking in the pan, while I was cleaning everything else, I noticed uh, this little piece of plastic inside the pan and pretty much immediately knew what it was. It is to the roller. <clears throat> so, it was probably decrepit, you know, it is uh, 20, 73 years old. To secure the uh, thing back, uh, the plunger, just take a toothpick and pull it, just rest it like that. Now the plunger's set out of the way. Everybody's got their own method. There's uh, special tools to use to do this, but uh, I myself use these snap ring pliers. This particular set is uh, a very nice one. It's reversible, so you can squeeze out, squeeze in, and it has uh, interchangeable size tips, but uh, I, like, I like this size here. You just stick the tips in there until they're set up, and then pop apart like that. Bam! Easy peasy. Now, <clears throat> the uh, lower finger... Assembly's free. 
and then here is the drum and as you can see there is no side of the roller anymore we've got tons of rollers in the parts bin over here we'll dig one out replace it and uh, get this thing popped back together Well, it almost is already gone, but uh, you can see a little tiny bit of it left there. There's uh, some green corrosion, and uh, just from age. But uh, took some CRC contact cleaner, sprayed on there. I'll apply a couple more coats, put some on the fingers here as well, and uh, a little tiny bit over here. It'll clean this up also. You can see some some of the wires right there. Minor stuff. This is more important over here. Get these fingers cleaned up. Just one little extra thing. Step while you got this thing apart to uh, tend to. All right. All right. <clears throat> We've got the uh, E-unit fingers all cleaned. A new drum installed. It's all snapped back together ready to go uh, another thing I wanted to point out to you I'm not going to show you the physical process but I wanted to point out what I do to clean these handrails this would be looking at the front of the locomotive the right hand side handrail this would be the left hand side note the curve for the boiler anyway it's hard to tell but you can see how much brighter that this one is than this one. And what I do to clean that is run it through my fingers in uh, one of these old beat up scotch Brite pads. And of course, in the liquid. And it works amazing. It's very uh, non-abrasive and it will just make it shine. Wait till you see it back on the loco shell it's gonna look so good um i've got to to clean this with soap and water the stack uh, was loose so i went ahead and took it out i'll clean that with soap and water i'll clean the uh, shell with soap and water and i've got all the other parts here i ended up taking the uh, bell assembly off there's the old roller and then the uh padding for the smoke unit I'll get all this put back over here nice and pretty for a reinstall and uh, we'll get back to you I gotta clean the uh, wheel frame here in just a minute all right All right, we've got all the parts stripped and cleaned. Looking good. There's the shell and the wheel frame. I've already got the shell off of this uh, 2426W tender. Check out this fancy marble bake light. I love it. So pretty. It's got a little crispy wire in there. We're going to snip that off and replace that. this thing done pretty quick. I won't be back. Alright, the uh, 
clips to the truck assemblies have been removed. And the front and rear rollers, wires to the soldering lug have been removed. This one's got a bad spot in it too. Just gonna replace both these wires. All right, we'll strip this whistle assembly down here. Get him nice and clean. What's up? <clears throat> We've got uh, the motor here and the relay. The uh, trucks are still soaking. These have soaked for quite a bit. Already cleaned this up a little bit. I'm going to show y'all what I do to uh, refresh the contacts on the relay. Just take a uh, little nail file here and very gently stick it inside there and apply pressure, pushing upwards, closing the contact, and then just keep the file straight. And then just scrub back and forth a couple times. That'll refresh the face of the uh, contact. Get some good conductivity in there. And a little bit of a rinse. And we can set that one aside to dry. All right. All right, I have already got the soldering iron hot and added the uh, new wires here. We'll rebuild this uh, tender here first. Look at that shell, it came up beautiful. Really good looking. All right, we'll rebuild this first and then uh, we'll get back to this part here. We'll be back. All right, here is the brush plate. Didn't show this in the actual pictures, but uh, clean the inside of here with Q-tips. Standard stuff. You can see the shine in there, it looks good. Okay, now this is the original wick, boiler wick here. You can see that it's only goes this tall. That means this rest of this part is missing just from years of use here. So I have a, some rock wool insulation here on hand. I have cut a little strip, pressed it down. It's oversized, so it fits in there, a little bit of a pressure fit. See, it's almost the same consistency. I'm not sure exactly what they used, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the next best thing without buying the actual part. So once I put it together on the plate, I will use my little awl, scribe tool, and we will puncture the hole through here for the armature. wanted to point that out all right get back to rebuilding all right we have a completely rebuilt 24 26w whistle check this out got my little mini test track here
it's getting pulled behind a locomotive. All right, carry on. Here's where I left off last night. Get this side all back together. Something I wanted to point out to y'all. When uh, putting this back together, you take the uh, <clears throat> the crosshead support guides and screw them on loosely, both of them. And then when installing the steam chest, tilt them up the cross the uh, the guides upwards, and then at an angle, drop this down in with those uh, guides in place, and then you can tighten them up after they're uh, installed, after this is installed. And uh, before, put the side ride <clears throat> on first and get it tightened up prior to, uh, oops, I, I hit the record button. Uh, Put the side rod on first uh, prior to uh, installing the <coughs> the drive rod and the uh, eccentric rod. Anyway, a couple little helpful tips when rebuilding this thing. Should have this thing back together in no time here. We're back. Oh yeah. Uh, I also wanted to mention that... Uh, Putting the uh, the guide on ahead of time is super helpful before when you're installing it, and uh, just a little bit quicker way of doing it helps slide right on in there. And this is what your uh, rear trailer truck assembly should look like when put back together. The draw bar is on the very top. And I have this put together just so um, there's actually uh, screw holes underneath here that uh, mount to the shell. But it's already all built. I could just take it apart super easy. The screw's not even tight. And uh, when I get the shell ready, we'll put it back on. Um, another thing that uh, cannot put the, uh, the front wheels on yet because this screw goes underneath here and that goes to the shell as well so until all that's done we will uh let those sit there and uh time to grease this up put it all back together from the front facing of the locomotive on the right which this would be the right side, forward facing. <clears throat> the uh, side and uh, drive rod are in the back and somewhat horizontal. Your eccentric crank is facing in the forward upright position. <clears throat> now, in the when that's in the same position. This one is also facing up in the forward position, somewhat horizontal and facing and down. So I just wanted to show that uh, proper alignment because those can get uh, put out of place and not work properly. All right. Since we didn't uh, remove the motor from the frame, <clears throat> you can't uh, grease the, wa the thrust washer and the thrust bearing properly, so to speak. So with the very first thrust washer forward to the armature, grease behind there on the shaft, up against the washer, and then shove the washer into the main bearing, packed with grease, then use the toothpick and apply grease to the thrust bearing 
spinning it around, ap amply applying grease inside there, make sure all the bearings are coated. And then now it's uh, ready to push the, the bearing forward and separate the washer. We'll push the bearing forward. And then we'll reapply some more grease up against the bearing, the thrust washer and thrust bearing. And then this will be ready to tighten up and push the br put the brush plate back on. Okay, we've got the gearbox all back together. The uh, glue on the plate where the magnets came apart when I took the plate off and they just popped free. So I have cleaned them up and uh, I got some super glue here. This Loctite gel. Oh, goodness. Whoa. Take much. <clears throat> now, this, uh, the corner of this plane right here of the side uh, plate is the line where the edge of the magnet goes. So just pop him in there. Scoot him over a little bit. Press them down. There. Nice and flat. And here's the second one. Now, if you have a book, it also informs you to make sure to keep the polarity of the magnet congruent. There he's down. Glue's spread out, and nice and flat. Okay, that's going to have to dry before the train actually gets some action but we still got some rebuilding to do but the drive trains all put back together and uh now we can carry on all right okay well even though that the uh plate needed to have the magnets uh glued back to it um i have uh, forgotten to put the uh screws for the collector insulator. This one goes in the rear, the short one. The tall one goes in the front with the insulating washer. And they go to these dudes here. So we'll let this dry up, pop it back off, and uh, and then we can put those bolts and screws in together. No big deal. I want to point that out to y'all. My mistake. Got out of order. Lots of things to try to show y'all here. All right, we'll be back. All right. We've got uh, the smoked unit, E unit, brush plate, and the magnet plate back on. We've got uh, some alligator clips hooked up to it. And... There's forward.
neutral, and reverse. I haven't put any uh, smoke fluid in there yet. We'll wait till we get it all back together. I'm sure that the uh, heater's working. It is a little warm to the touch, just barely from running it from before the video and just now. Uh, I have no doubt it will work just fine. All right, coming right along. And we are a go. Very nice. We'll be back. <laughs> 